one of the center pieces at the top here, probably hanging out from the side like that, okay? Now, I have other embellishments as well. We got another acorn. So we have one here. Maybe we want one up here or maybe we want it hanging off down here. I think that would look nice if we have it hanging down from the bottom there. I hope there's enough lighting here, you guys. And like I said, it's dark and I still haven't figured out which type of lighting to get for this type of filming. So in the future, there'll be better lighting, I'm sure. Okay, so this one I know, I know me, I'm gonna want it down right here, kind of hanging off the bottom, okay? Now you're like, well, there's a big space right there. Yep, yeah, there is, because that's what, that's where, that's where Happy Fall Y'all is gonna go. He's gonna go right there, okay? He's gonna go there, and I want you to be able to actually read what's on the side, okay? And that's where the, when I'm just sticking up just a little bit. we need as a society we need all of those things but you're not really taught to do anything creative as far as I mean they even take the music out of the schools now I mean it's hard to find a music class for these kids so I just feel like these kids are being cheated um, like I said I had a mom that was very encouraging and me and the music as I was always into music and into crafting and she was always very instrumental in making sure that I have whatever it is I needed to um, to really experience it and I'm so grateful for that because um, if it wasn't for that I don't know where I would be when it comes to being artistic and then my mom is very artistic too she, you know she has a craft room as well she sews and she does crafts and loves to decor loves to decorate she used to have us up in the middle of the night moving furniture when she got an idea. Two or three o'clock in the morning, we got to move furniture. But I appreciate all those life levels, lessons. Um, all those life lessons is what made me to be the woman that I am as far as being creative and having my own personality um, and identity when it comes to crafting. So my mom's very original. She's an original woman for sure. And um, some might think she's a little weird. <laughs> I think she's okay with me saying that. 
and that's okay. Weird is good. It just means you're not like everybody else. And who really wants to be like everybody else? I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be Monique and happy with me. Okay? So, um, we're attaching these flowers here. Let's see how this is going to go. I've got one right there. And then we'll put this one going back this way. If you can't see what I'm doing in the back, I'm actually twirling um, the little pieces, you know, the ends of the stems around the wreath form so that it can hold on. Okay, so that's that. You can see his nose. We don't want him to be covered up. We want him to look like he's, he's smelling this little pretty fat flower right there. Okay, that's what we want for him. And I really want to put a pumpkin somewhere in here, too, but maybe on this side you can have a pumpkin right here. It's all about building. Just want to make sure you build it up. Building it up with layers, texture, color. And really what I should be doing next is my ribbons. Okay. So I have this one here that I thought would be fun. Kind of dealing with different prints and with ribbon you can just you know however you see fit sometimes I'll just tie it around it like this I'm getting ready to do here I'm just gonna tie it a knot right here with this ribbon and then continue around um, you could put your pieces on however you want them to be layered uh, um, in some places I'm gonna want this ribbon to be behind the scene and in some places I'm gonna want it to pop out you know so I'm just going to double tie it to the frame, okay, and then hide it with the deco mesh. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just going to go around, you know. I like to usually have it in the middle of the the roof like this. We're just going to go around, and then where I need to um, tap it down. I don't want to really use more zip ties, but I guess I will today. Today we're gonna just zip tie it out. Or wait a minute, this is even better. So the other deco mesh that I have in the tubes, almost like pipe cleaner, but it's a long tube. This is the best stuff to use for. Um, I feel like you know how when you're combing hair, you always lose a comb. I feel like anytime I'm crafting, I always lose the scissors. <laughs> Bear with me, you guys. Bear with me. What did I do with the scissors? Oh, there they are. Okay. So, we're going to use this tubing here as a, to help us tie down our ribbon. So, usually I would find the beginning, but again, I'm not really concerned with all that. So, this is what I'm going to use to tie around the ribbon, okay? To tie the ribbon to the frame. Um, because, and then you want to leave some a little long because that adds character to it. You know, it kind of gives it a nice little feel. Nice little look that they're long and kind of sticking out from the wreath. That's actually going to be nice. You know, you can twist them around or, you know, this one won't be that long, but you get my drift, right? So we're just going to cut it like there. You see how it's sticking out like that? That's fine. And this adds character. It adds some character to it. You don't want no plain. So what I like to do with the ribbon is zigzag it. Okay, so... One side I might go in the middle or to the left or to the right, and then I just zigzag back and forth. If I go to the left on this one, on this one I'll pull to the right. Okay? Pretty simple. We're just going to continue around. I'm going to continue around. But yes, I have the best mom in the world. You know, um, it's nice when you have a supporting parent. And it's also nice that we have um, similar likes. You know, um, my oldest daughter, it is hard to get her to, <laughs> to come into this craft room. I got a damn near pull teeth, so she's not crafty in that way. She's good at other things, but she don't want nothing to do with crafting. If I offer to, you know, say, hey, you want to come with me to Hobby Lobby or to Michael's? She's like looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, mama, you already know I'm not going. And then um, to give her credit, I do go in there. And, you know, going into Michael's or Hobby Lobby is like, for me, it's like going to a casino, okay? 
I would probably do less damage in a casino. I know I would. I would do less damage in a casino because I don't really gamble than I do at these um, craft stores. Okay. I love craft stores <laughs> and boutiques, uh, like I stated before. So I go in there and get lost. They got no, 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 uh, how they say, no clocks, no windows. <laughs> You know, they go to the casino, there's no clocks. Have you ever noticed? I don't know if everyone knows that, but when you go to a casino, they do not put clocks, nor do they usually have windows. And that's because they want you to just forget about anything that might be important. You know, they don't want you to look outside and remember that you got a car note that might be due. And they want you to spend they, that money with them. So remember that next time you go to a casino, that it's, it's designed to take your money. Have fun, but don't have fun. And if, if it's it's not fun when you gotta pay a penalty of not having enough, right? I know some people say, "Oh, the casino, don't go to the casino at all." I don't think there's anything wrong with having a little fun at the casino, but don't have fun with money you ain't got. We ain't trying to spend mortgage and utility money on casinos, okay? I'm sure y'all already know that. So I we have a casino. Um, actually not far from where I live, about 15 minutes away. Um, I frequently go, I not frequently go in there. If I go in there, it's because I'm going to the club. They have a nice little club in there and they have a really good buffet. Oh my goodness. Their buffet is so good. So we usually end up at that buffet. <laughs> I remember a time when I, I was pregnant with my last child and emphasis on last child. We, uh, I was really just craving that place so bad. And the line sometimes, depending on when you go, I think we went for Mother's Day or something, can just be ridiculous. See how this is turning out, y'all? And so you want to make sure you fluff out your, um, your deco mesh. This is not a rush type thing. This is just take your time and enjoy the process, okay? So we're just doing this back and forth, and we're going to look at it in a minute to see if we like the flow of it. Okay? But we're going to just keep going. Um, I would have my husband take me to go and eat at the buffet. It can be pricey a little bit, so I would never really take the kids with me because my kids are picky, and um, we ain't finna waste fifty dollars per person in pickiness, right? So I would just he, he and I, and it was for Mother's Day, and the line was about an hour and a half wait. Yeah, I know, worse than going into a club for a buffet. So, and there's no chairs, and so I was pregnant. I was big and pregnant too. And I didn't care. I was, I'm standing in this line. So my husband, he, you know, he's like, well, babe, I can get you a chair. And we'll just move the chair as the line moves because it wasn't moving very fast. And I, you know, and I told him, no, I'm good. You know, I was good standing. But you, you should have seen the looks, <laughs> the looks that people were giving him because they were like looking at him like, oh, you, sir, you know, dirty son of a something. Got your wife standing in this line pregnant, like that pregnant. And so other people started asking, like, ma'am, would you like a chair? You know, he's standing right there and they're asking him, asking me if I want a chair, almost as though, you know, he's not doing his job. And I had to keep reaffirming everyone, like, no, I'm good. I'm I want to stand up. You know, sometimes when you're pregnant, standing up feels better than sitting down. And I was at that stage in the pregnancy where I, I just I didn't want to sit. It was just too much pressure. I know it's probably 10, TMI. It's just too much pressure. I'd rather just stand. But um, great food at the casino. But that's usually all we use the casino for is either we're at the club or we're just having a date night to get away. We rarely ever gamble. And it's not because we think gambling is a sin and all that craziness. It's because we like to save our money, honey. I don't want to take a chance. I want to go buy something that I know I can walk out of the store with. So we might spend maybe $10, $10, $15, something like that. But that's usually it. Even when we go to Vegas, which I know people think is just a sin to go to Vegas and not gamble. I remember one time we went for a Marine Corps ball and we just, we went in there and we were there for golly, maybe two or three days. And then on our way leaving, we're like, oh man. We didn't gamble at all, and on our way out, we put like a dollar on one of the machines and did a gamble. You know, we gambled a little bit um, there just so we could say we gambled. You know, you don't want to go to Vegas and not gamble. So, 
yeah, we're not real big into that. Which is good being that there's a casino that's only 15 minutes away, right? If I had an issue with gambling, that would be very dangerous. Very dangerous. But um, we are making our way around this reef, you guys. Uh-huh. It's coming on along. And I just want you to notice that we're just layering. We're just putting more and more things. And we're making sure that we put it in a, a logical way to where it looks good to the eye. We want it to look appealing and balanced to the eye. We don't want it. Um, I'm all with eclectic, but there has to be some balance and stability to it. Otherwise, your eye is not going to know where to look. And then it's just going to be too much and you're not going to look at it at all. Okay. So balance is key, right? So we're working our way around. I haven't stood up yet to see how it's coming about, but I'm assuming that it's going to be all right. And you want to work the deco mush, like I've stated before. Make sure that you work it as you go. Okay. And we're just cutting this. This some um, stuff, you see how to be it is. If you pull it, it's, see how this stuff, I tie all kinds of stuff down with this stuff. It's the best. It is the best. It never lets me down. Okay. This is, this is pretty much like my pipe cleaner. This is the, this is the kind of so-called <laughs> alternative thing I would use for um, pipe cleaners instead of pipe cleaners because it actually adds to the wreath. You don't have to hide it when you're using pipe cleaners, unless you're using the really, um, sparkly ones like the one i took off of the um, acorn and that one was like a greeny sparkly uh, i use those pipe cleaners because that went along with christmas and that's what that wreath had came that um pine cone was used last in a christmas display and so in that case it was fine to be seen but if you're just using basic pipe cleaners Sometimes they don't really go along with what you want to do or the look you're going for. So you want to make sure that you uh, hide them away. But if you're using this, that eliminates that, that uh, whole situation. You can just go ahead and allow your work to be seen. You allow the little ties to be seen. And as you can see throughout the week, you just see little sparks of little things hanging and it's really nice actually give some depth and some interest to your wreath okay and you just double tie it if you can't see it i'm just doing a double tie just a double knot and then just let the rest just hang okay and like i said you want one going left one going right 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 left right left that's how you want it you can see from over here left right left right left right and that's going to give you that consistency throughout your wreath okay we're coming on around coming on around the bend now and here we go so that was like that right we're back in with the wet okay i've been saving this um hey you guys we're making our our rounds here we're getting there we're getting there don't lose hope don't lose faith we're getting there. And so here we are at the bottom again of the wreath. Okay. So I'm still working with the ribbon here, as you can see. Now, what we're going to do now is we want to make sure that we continue our ribbon on um, these bottom plates. Now, they're kind of squished right now, but when we're done and it's standing up, we'll be able to fluff them out. So don't let that discourage you. Okay. We're going to look under there and make sure we can tuck it under there we're gonna get some more of our twine here cut a piece you know piece maybe a little bit from your fingertip down to your wrist depending on how big your hand is um is about the size because you remember we want to have a little bit left so it can hang off and give it some character character okay so we're going to continue on here working this wreath your hands are going to be real ashy after all of this, but it's okay. We're going to just throw on some lotion and call it a day once we're done. And it's, it's so dry right now in the, just in the air, period. Had the humidifier on all throughout the day because skin just feels, I don't know, depending on where you live. Where I live, it's extremely dry. 
So we got it on that one and our bottom pleats here and we're still doing the left, right, left, right. So let's look here and see what side is this supposed to be on? Okay. So this one is more towards your left. This one is more towards your right. Okay. So then this one needs to be more towards your left like that there. And then we're going to do this one more towards just underneath pretty much because we want this reef to look good at all angles. We don't want it to just corral everything to one side and then there's a portion that's missing, right? Okay. So we're going to just continue on here. So tell me guys, leave in the comments, uh, what are some of your plans for Thanksgiving? What are you doing? Are you going to cook? Um, Cause I know nowadays a lot of people are not cooking. They're doing these like online orders and or they're going out because they don't want to have to clean their kitchen or what have you, which I can understand. But in our family, we all pitch in. He don't help, but he's doing other things. Replenish, replenish, repul, can't talk. Blah, blah, blah. He replenishes things throughout the house that's being used, move chairs, move equipment, set up equipment, you name it. He's a he's our handyman throughout the whole process. So anything that's too heavy or too hard or that I don't want to do, he does. And so I, I cut him slack when it comes to all of that. But normally the women corral together and get all that done. Uh, team effort, right? So, and then we talk about the ones that don't. <laughs> so we don't talk about them when they leave. We talk about them while they're there. Like, oh, you ain't going to get up and come help clean up. We'll, we will. So our family's a little bit unorthodox. You know, a little bit too real sometimes. All right. We've got a nice acorn here. As you can see, it looks like our hedgehog is smelling the flowers. Right? right? He's just as happy as can be. So, um, kind of wanted this acorn to kind of be tucked under here a little bit. So, I think we're going to go ahead and attach that now. Okay. So, you just feel for the wiring. You know where your frame is. You want to attach, try and attach everything that you can to the frame. The only things that may not be attached to the frame sometimes is flowers um, or other little small accessories. And that's just because you're going to hot glue it instead of attach it to the frame. But anything else, you really want to make sure that it's attached to the frame because you want it to be a stable piece. You don't want it to shift and or move. Um, when you're making your wreath, you're placing everything where you want it. So you want to make sure that that's where it stays, right? So we're going to do that. I have that coming off just like that there, okay? And keep trying to make sure you also do this in a well-lit area. I know it doesn't look very bright probably on screen, but it actually is. I have several different lights on in here um, to help me see what I'm doing okay and you want to make sure you have a nice large table to do this on and or um, at one point I didn't have a big enough table I would just do it on the floor Ooh, excuse me now like I said it is nighttime I'm not as quick to stay up like well you know what I, I, I sleep in three hour increments really I'll go to sleep and be sleep for a couple of hours and pop up and do stuff clean stuff get and make start making some music throw some beats together um like i stated before for those who don't know i am a, i am in school to do music engineering i should be graduating next semester actually um so i do make music and um i love it it's something i started years ago about 12 years ago actually before my husband and i got married um, I was in school to be a music engineer and then things happened. Kids came along, you know the story. So that's that. But I uh, finally got back into it and, and I kept waiting to have time and it just never happened. So when you're trying to do something that you're really passionate about, sometimes you can't wait. You just got to go ahead and make it, make, make the time to do what you want to do. Okay. Don't wait, because sometimes you wait and just prolonging it. And um, people make time for what's important to them. And at the time, 
I had to take care of children. I didn't have time for me, like I said. But now, at this stage in my life, I have decided that I, I matter. I matter too. And I've always felt that I've mattered, but I never really implemented that when it came to what I want to do. I always put everyone else in front of what I wanted to do. And I'm not saying that I'm just selfish now, but I'm definitely considering myself as well in the process. You mothers, please consider yourself as well because your kids going to grow up and leave. Trust me. I got one that's on, got one foot out the door now, whenever that day happens. <laughs> so just know that they're not going to stay forever. They're going to grow up and live their life. And so you, you don't want them to grow up and then you don't even know who you are or what you should be doing or what you like or what you want to do because you spent all your life completely forgetting about yourself and catering to your children. And I'm all about catering. My mother catered to me. You know, she, like I said, I got the best mama. But she also took care of her too. And so um, I did do that with my first child. I made sure I had time for me. But when you have one, it's a lot easier to think of you than when you have three more. You know, I have four girls all together. So when you have that many children, two of them being autistic, which adds to <laughs> the stress of things, shall we say. Um, it's hard sometimes to have time for yourself. But I've learned trial and error how to do that. So we're going to implement it now that I know, right? Our pumpkins. So let's see how many pumpkins we have, y'all. Because I might be able to get pumpkins going around the whole week if we have enough of them. Like I said, I did not buy anything this year i really didn't now let me show you these you see these acorns here these are actually easter eggs you see that now i have them on my welcome video if you go back and look at the welcome video you'll see them on my fall tree but these are easter eggs that i painted brown and just wrapped around with tool but don't they look like acorns see creativity now Save you some money because I saw some acorns.